Hello, and welcome to the Wave Cave in scenic New Bedford, Massachusetts. This is the control room with I crap on the floor. Today we are going to be doing a little tutorial on the system we're running here, which is the Mackie D8B digital mixing board and the Mackie HDR hard disk recorder. Um, we'll sidle on up to the board here, and we're going to start with a brief overview of the console and its GUI, or Graphic User Interface um, Keyboard and Mouse and Monitor Style Control Surface. All right, let's start with a, a brief look at the board here. The console is 56 inputs, 72 channels. Uh, you may be looking down and saying, but Tony, there's only 24 faders, 25 if you include the little master fader. How is that possible? I'm so glad you asked. Let's look at that. We're going to come over to the bank switches here, and you'll see that the console is actually folded over on itself in some capacity. If we hit the bank switch for 1, we get channels 1 through 24. Hitting the bank switch for 2 brings up the next layer, which is channels 25 to 48. The third layer, channels 49 to 72, brings back a number of effects returns that come back from the uh, digital processing cards in the console, as well as eight channels of returns that connect to the Macintosh computer. So we have eight digital channels that go back and forth between uh, the Mackie system and the Macintosh computer. All right, let's move on down and take a little brief look at what these layers do. We're going to start with the first layer. Layer one is the mic line layer. This is the layer that you use during recording. You'll notice at the top of the board, we have a trim knob and the, on the first 12 channels at least a mic line switch. Uh, the first 12 channels of the Mackie have mic preamps. The second 12, channels 13 to 24, are line only, which is why they have no mic line switch, although they do have a line trim. Uh, when you're recording, these do not change with the layers. Virtually all the other buttons on the console, everything over here, uh, changes to the next bank. Their functions change to correspond to whatever bank you're on. In other words, channel 1 can also be channel 25 or effects return 1 on layer 3. These knobs at the top are always basically layer 1, the mic line input, so you can reach up and adjust your levels to tape or to the recorder at any given point without having to change back to layer 1. So, as we move down the channel strip a bit, you'll see that every channel has its own LED peak meter. Uh, which reads there is a slightly darker line here at minus 15, which is essentially zero in the analog world, uh, which gives you about 15 dB of headroom over the top until you hit the little red overload lights. For those of you who are new to digital recording, unlike analog, red, overload, bad. See red, bad. Red is bad. Very important to remember this fact. All right. Moving on down, we'll take a brief look at the rest of the uh, things on this particular channel. Or if I can get my big fat head out of the way. Uh, the next thing below that are three switches over here. Uh, record ready will remotely put the uh, hard disk recorder into a record ready mode. If you look up here, you'll see channels one and two are blinking record ready. Um, you can, of course, simply click on them uh, using the mouse that's connected to the hard disk recorder as well. or arm it from the front panel of the hard disk recorder, which is buried under my patch cables, Zoink. right here, and turn them on and off, but a very convenient way, uh, also transport controls, etc., as well as a time display on the hard disk recorder, but very conveniently, all of this can be done from the digital console, so if you want to arm some tracks, these will arm your tracks, and they communicate through MMC, which stands for MIDI Machine Code, which is how uh, digital gear talks to each other. Also functioning under MIDI machine control are the transport controls. Play, stop, rewind, record. So if you hit... Oh, that sounds really bad. We're going to try that again. Hang on. Okay, we're back here at the Wave Cave where we're asking the musical question, what the hell was that all about? That's what was supposed to happen. When I push the button, the magic of MIDI machine code. Everything plays together. And stops, and fast forwards, and plays. And does other important things. 
Uh, that does bring up an important point. I actually know the reason it made that horrible sound, which is uh, turning the system on is very important. The first thing that needs to go on is whichever component establishes the master word clock. In this case, that would be the mixing board, the uh, Mackie D8B, which has the Apogee word clock in it. Uh, the problem is that I had restarted the Mackie after turning on the hard disk recorder, and so it was a little confused about who was the clock master. And that lovely noise is what happens when your system doesn't know who's the clock master. So there you go. Clock master. Not the clock master. All right. Console goes on first then the hard disk recorder, and then last is the computer. Um, and actually, last for real real, if you look down here, you'll see two power strips. One is labeled mains, which is powered to virtually everything, except the speakers. The other power strip is labeled speakers. Speakers go on last because as things boot up, sometimes they make popping and crunching noises and do other bad things. So we turn those on once everybody is booted and happily up. Okay, let's go back to our tour of the console. Uh, we look at the uh, record ready switches. Uh, the next thing down is the assign button. These will go into in a minute. This is used to assign any given channel to any given recorder track. And then below that is the right switch. And the right switch is used to engage the automation on any given channel. Below that, every channel has one V pot or virtual pot. Um, that knob can be used for a number of things. If we follow along here, dum, 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 dum. there's so many of them. We come over here and we'll see the master section. In the master section, you have a bunch of selector switches. Uh, the main switch here that we use most of the time is the one that's lit up down here is pan. When you have pan pushed, these knobs are pan pots. If you come further up, you'll see that you have eight mono aux ends and two stereo aux ends, which are 9 and 10, 11 and 12. If you push those buttons, you'll notice the uh, indicators on these will change. and all go down to zero because I don't have anything sent. So that would be aux 1, and then we could press aux 2, etc. And you'll see as we switch between them, the indicators move to show which aux you're on. So these knobs can be any of the 12 auxiliary sends or the pan pot. Uh, and as a note, when you get to rump, aux ends 9 and 10, 11 and 12, eh, such a bad view. Um, when you push the 9, 10 button, these become the level for 9 and 10 as a stereo pair. And the pan is the pan for 9, 10 as a stereo pair. If you pan it to the left, you get 9. If you pan it to the right, you get 10. If you pan it in the middle, you get 9 and 10. Big surprise, right? We're going to go back to pan for right now because that's the usual mode that we leave these in. All right. Next, not too many more buttons, thankfully, for all of you watching. We have three switches. Select, which is used to uh, tell the console which channel you want to work on for something called the fat channel. Uh, and the fat channel gives you access to all of the channel's internal features, which are a four-band parametric EQ, a compressor limiter, and a noise gate as well as, of course, the 12 aux ends, phase reverse switch, and a few other little goodies. Um, below that is a solo switch and a mute switch. Hopefully those are self-explanatory. And below that is the slidey white thing. Oh, wait, that has a name. That's actually the volume fader. Uh, once again, I'm hoping you know what that is. If you don't, perhaps there is some other video you should be watching, not this one. Turn this off right now if you don't know what that is. You can't even look at that. Okay. 